Hi, my name is Tedupal, and I'm going to talk to you about building bots, adaptive cards, task modules, and message extensions in Teams. Without further ado, let's dive in. Let's take an overview of the various capabilities available to you in Teams as a developer. We have tabs which you can use to bring rich content from applications right into Teams. We have bots where users can use messages in a conversational manner to actually talk to your application. Messaging extensions allow users to query data from applications from inside Teams and converse about them, discuss about them. Notifications are a great way for applications to push data into Teams. So for example, if a bug is created in Jira or GitHub or Visual Studio and you want your team to know, um, you can set up notification or a connector. Adaptive cards allow you to collect rich data input from users as well as send rich interactive cards to users as well. Voice and video allows you to build bots that allow users to interact with your applications using voice and video. Microsoft Graph, we have a lot of APIs available in Graph as well for Teams, so you can use the APIs in Graph to create Teams, add channels, you know, modify channels, add users, and so on. For all these features, once you've built an application using them, you have a couple of ways to distribute them as well. If you're targeting an enterprise, um, if you're an LOB developer, you can actually distribute your application to your organization's app catalog. If you're an ISV partner, you can actually publish your application to App Source, which would make it available all over the world to all users of Teams. Administrators can assign policies over applications as well and decide which of their users have access to which applications, and they can also prepin applications to drive adoption of applications as well. Here's an overview of what's a typical workflow for developing apps in Teams. Um, so it starts off by the developer first defining the app, which is done by defining what we call an app manifest. It's a, basically a JSON file which has various sections where you describe the capabilities of the application that you're building. So capabilities here are referring to things like tabs, bots, messaging extensions. So you implement these capabilities by writing code and you are leveraging the Teams SDK. So we have SDKs available for building tabs, which is a JavaScript SDK. And then we have SDKs available for bots as well, which are in Node and .NET as well. Then next, you host your application, for example, on Azure. You're testing your application after that, and you create an app package for that. You can take the app package and sideload your application into a team. Once things look good, you're ready to distribute, and you can distribute your application by uploading to your tenant catalog, so everybody in your tenant has access to it, or you can go ahead and publish it to App Source. So we're going to dive into uh, code in a little bit. We're going to do that for a bot, but let's talk about bots a little bit first. Bots make it easy for users to interact with your applications in conversations. So basically, users are sending text messages to your application, and your application is responding as well. You build bots using Microsoft Bot Framework for Teams, and your bots would complete tasks via commands or using natural language. We do support actionable messages. So what that means is, as a bot, you don't have to send just text back. You can actually send rich cards back, and the cards can have input controls on them. So you can have like a date picker or a drop down or a text box and so on. So I'm going to be demoing that in a little bit as well. So here's typically what's involved in building a bot. You could use one of the samples that we have made available, or you could also start with a Visual Studio template, and that's what I'm going to be doing. You use App Studio to register your bot, get the app ID password, use ngrok, and I'll show you why you need that. But this is how you get the request landing on your local machine from within Teams. All right, so let's dive in. So let me start off with a new project here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is um, do new project and select the bot application template. So I'm going to start with echo bot. Um, let's call it my first bot. I'm going to discard what I had open here. And so once it gets created, it's going to give you a basic bot that echoes what is sent to it. Right, so we have the code here. Um, so we're going to configure the bot first. So we go to the bot file, and this is where we need to provide an app, app ID and a password. Um, so we're going to get that first. So we go to Teams, and we are going to use um, App Studio. 
Okay, so we're in App Studio and we're filling out information for creating our application. So I've provided a short name, um, an app ID, a package name, a version, and filled out the description as well. So basically I'm filling out all the mandatory fields right now. So need to provide a privacy uh, link as well. And once that is set up, we go to bots and then click on setup. And we're going to register a new bot. So we call it my first bot. And so we can select, we need to select scope here, uh, scopes here and the idea here is personal means you want your bot to only work in one-on-one -on -one conversations with users. Teams means that you want your bot to be able to participate in teams and like pull channels and pull the members in a team and so on. So I'm gonna select both of them here and click create bot. Wait a moment, and the bot is created. Um, so I'm going to take the app ID here and paste that into the bot file I had open. And next, I need the app password, which I'm going to get from here. I click generate new password, and it's going to show me the password. So I take that, copy it in. That's looking good. And next I need to provide an endpoint address. So the idea here is that whenever a user sends a message to your bot, this is where Teams would deliver the message. So this has to be pointing to your service in Azure or wherever you're hosting it. So in this case, because we're testing right now, we're gonna use a tool called ngrok, which builds a local tunnel and will give you a URL. And whenever any request lands on that URL, the requests are gonna be piped to your local machine. So we need to provide a port number and I don't know that yet. So what I'm gonna do is run this project and see what port number it runs on by default. And it's gonna be 3978 as you can see here. Let's wait for it. And it is running on port 3978. So we're going to ask ngrok to um, pipe requests to this port. So ngrok starts up and it would issue us a URL. And we're going to take the HTTPS URL and paste that into the uh, messaging endpoint in App Studio. Okay, so ngrok started up and it has issued us these URLs. There's an HTTP and an HTTPS URL. For bot endpoint URLs, they have to be HTTP. So we're gonna copy the HTTP. Um, it needs to be HTTPS and we're gonna copy the HTTPS URL here and paste that back into App Studio. So we know it's gonna be api.messages because that is what the default template does. Um, it starts up a controller to listen on this route and we tab out of it, which would save it. And now our bot has been created. So we have an app manifest created at this point and we are going to install it into a team. What this has done is actually registered a bot behind the scenes on the bot framework portal. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So it's registered under your account that you are using to sign into Teams. So we go ahead and sign in. And sign in is successful. So we should see a bot here named my first bot that I just created. So this bot was created by App Studio. And if you go under settings, you would see the messaging endpoint URL. So if you want, you could change this here as well. So let's say um, change it to message two. And you can change it back to what it was earlier. But the point being, you can actually edit the information from here as well. So this has been saved. So now let's take the bot here and install it into a team. So you can do it from App Studio itself by clicking on the install dialog, uh, install button and go to the install installation flow. Or you can also download the app manifest. You can take the app package and actually distribute that as well. So let's do that for now. So it's been downloaded, it's available in your downloads folder. Um, we're gonna test this bot out in, in our test team. So 
to keep things simple, let me actually spin up a new team for testing. Okay, so I clicked on join or create a team. The dialog is going to load up momentarily and allow me to create a team. Okay, there we go. So I create a new team. So build a team from scratch and we're going to call it a test team. Private works just fine for us. So I'm going to call it my first bot test team and create. So this goes ahead and creates the team for us. And then we're going to go into the apps management page for this team and install the bot. Okay, so we have the team created. At this point, if you want, you can add members who are going to help you with testing. So I'm going to skip that and go directly to the team. Okay, so I go to the apps tab and you can see all the apps that are available in your team by default. But we are going to upload the bot that we just created. So I click on upload a custom app and then I select the app package that I exported earlier. So it was called my first bot. I select that and it would sideload the bot into this team. So this will only work if your tenant admin has enabled sideloading in your tenant. So that is a requirement for this. So the bot has been installed in this team and it is available now. And um, do we still have the bot running? Yes, we do. So we should see some requests actually now come into your bot because the bot was just added. So we see there was the installation update event that fired, there was a the conversation update. So this is how bot framework informs your bot that things are happening. So this event tells your bot that it was just added to a team. The member added was your bot itself. The ID here is the app ID of the bot that we provided in the .bot file. And you have information about the team here. So at this point, you can start building state inside your bot of, to, let's say if you want to keep track of which teams your bot has been added to, this would be the event that has all the information for you to do that. So we received this and um, our bot responded back with the default data, so it's a 200 OK. So now actually let's invoke this bot from within Teams and see um, what are we getting back. So we go to the general channel and the way bots work in Teams is that they can only listen to messages when they're actually at mentioned. So I'm going to at mention this bot and send a message, let's say test. So this message is delivered to your bot and it responds back with the default you sent, um, whatever we, were sent, we sent it. And we can see this message coming in as well. So when I sent this test message to the bot, this is the post that was made by Teams to your bot. So you can see the text that was delivered to your bot and uh, the type of the activity, which is a message, and you have information about the channel where this message was posted, information about the client that the user used to send this message. And because your bot was at mention, you have neatly extracted information about the at mention as well. So if like other users were also at mentioned, you would have that data here. Okay, so we have a bot working here and um, let's quickly look at the code as well. In bot framework v4, everything pretty much happens in the bot file here. So the on turn async is the main function called and this is where you can write your logic. So the uh, logic here by default just echoes back what it was, what the bot received. So we're going to modify this a little bit to kind of do stuff with information that is sent from teams. So we're going to read information about the team, information about the channels, and so on. We have this sample code available on GitHub. So let me just go to GitHub and find it. So bot builder, .NET, Microsoft Teams, GitHub. So we need the instructions for adding the middleware. So I copy this and I'm going to paste that in there. So I'm going to do that just before the credential provider is set. So I brought in the team's middleware. So this will fail compilation because I need to bring the NuGet package in. So let me do that. 
So manage NuGet packages, and we are going to bring in Microsoft.bot.builder.teams. Installing that package, and then we're going to use um, Visual Studio to add the using statements as well. Okay, so the package was installed, and I'm going to use Control Period to have Visual Studio um, help me add the using statements as well. So we fix that. We add configuration credential provider as well. Okay, so we're all good here. So the Teams middleware is now hooked up. So which means now in your bot you have access to um, helpers that will allow you to fetch data from Teams. So like get the list of channels, get list of members and so on. So there is some sample code here is uh, available for that as well. So the very first thing you need to do is get hold of Teams context because that is your entry point to get all the data about Teams. So um, I copied this and I'm gonna paste that in. So let me add it in after this. So I get Teams context out of turn state. Again, I'm using control period to help, to let Visual Studio help me add the right using statements. So we have that now. And then this is kind of how you go about getting the list of channels. So like I said, everything is off of Teams context. So Teams context is how you discover the ID of the team in which the message was posted that your bot received, ID of the channel, ID of the tenant. And this is how you go and fetch the channel. So you have a property called operations available on Teams context that gives you helper methods to fetch the list of channels and fetch information about the team. So I'm just gonna copy this in, paste it. Again, control period to help, uh, let Visual Studio help us fix it. And we're all set. So build it, control shift B. So this should build just fine. Okay, so build is successful and then we just start uh, debugging. So our browser starts up as usual on 3978. So now when I do the same thing, I should be seeing some more information returned by the bot. So same thing as before, I at mention the bot, send a message to it. So this will be delivered to the bot. We should see a request come in. And we should see a request on 40 port as well from ngrok. Oh, so we were not running at that time. So uh, it just so happened that Visual Studio had not started running. So I'm going to send the message again. And I'm going to change it this time so we can see the difference. So I send test two. Oh, so, so what's happened here is the callback URL is incorrect because we are actually listening on messages. So let me quickly fix that. I go to bot framework portal and I figure that out because the um, we can see here that the requests are going to the wrong URL. So sign in, find our bot and we called it my first bot. So we find the bot, go to settings, and um, let's fix that. So we had mentioned the bot again. This time let's send a slightly different message so we can see the difference. And send, and we should see another request come in to ngrok. Okay, so it came in at the right URL and the breakpoint in Visual Studio is hit. So now you can step in and you know, the normal debugging stuff here. So we see Teams context was initialized and um, so all these properties are actually, all this information is hydrated from the event that is coming in. This is a request that came in. There's a bunch of data in here in channel data the information here is being hydrated from that. I F10 over it, F10 over that, and then we can see that these values are getting initialized. If you want, you can keep debugging. I'm gonna hit F5 and let it go. 
and now we should see the response in teams so name of this team is this there's only one channel in this team and the group id is this and the bot sent all this because that is what the code says here so we got the list of channels got the information about the team and sent it okay so what we did here is we got a bot built from scratch on v4 for teams and uh, we were able to send messages to it and receive them and debug them as well all right so let's go back to our presentation and learn about other capabilities as well so for bots let's talk about what it takes to build a great experience the uber point here is you want to build an experience that makes sense for your end user so you can stick with a simple command line sort of interface you don't have to go into natural language processing if you're not ready yet um, like you could have very particular command that you have to send to your bot and bot responds to that it's okay to start that way you can leverage the bot framework sdk and the teams sdk to enhance your bot and you can use the context available to your bot to respond accordingly like in this case i was using information about the channels and information about the team you can definitely leverage that in your bots so if you start with a non-natural language sort of approach to your bot a more command line approach you can actually use input menus as well in your bot to keep your users on rail so they're not sending arbitrary text over to your bots so let's switch over to messaging extensions messaging extensions like i said earlier are a great way to allow users to query data from your application from within teams for us in teams we use visual studio quite heavily let me set that up and show how that works so i'm going to do um, i have visual studio already pinned here so i click on that and because i've never used it here it's asking me to set it up in this team so i'm going to set that up to a test project that i already have i'm going to choose this visual studio organization and then choose a test project under it called reno click continue and at this point this messaging extension is configured there's logic inside this extension to by default try to figure out what is the most relevant bug you're looking for because this was the last bug i visited on azure devops for this project that is a bug it's suggesting so i can click on this and post a card about the bug in this channel and discuss with my team members so for example i'm trying to find out you know is anyone looking at this bug So team members can then jump in and we can discuss the uh, bug here. The core idea here is that you're able to bring data from an external system and talk about it with your team members. This is how messaging extensions work today. Okay, so we're about to enhance messaging extensions with a bunch of new features and let me demo that as well. So far, what you had to do was, um, like I showed earlier, click on the DevOps or the Compose extension icon, and then go ahead and search for the thing that you want to talk about, post it, and then talk about it. But we've now made this easier. Typically, the way you work with third-party apps is, or even Microsoft apps is you use your browser. So I would typically have the um, Visual Studio site open, and maybe I'm looking at that bug. So let me go to that bug and kind of get in that state. So I go to queries and then this should show the bug that was assigned to me. So I go to work items and I should find this bug here. Here we go. So your typical workflow for talking about things in third party systems is to actually take the URL, copy it and paste it in Teams. Up until today, that URL was sort of just a URL. There was nothing around it. But now we do the work to actually expand the URL for you. So I pasted the URL in, and then Teams would actually use automatically invoke the Azure DevOps extension, get the card payload, and convert this URL into that card. And then I can just post it, and then people can talk about it. So this is so much easier than earlier where you had to remember to use the messaging extension and do the right set of things to talk about, like bring a card in. But now you can just paste URLs in and they would resolve into cards. So it's a lot easier than before. And to leverage these in your code also, it's pretty much the same logic as before. You're still building a message extension. There's really nothing much different about it. 
So we're also adding message actions and let me demo that as well. So let me go in um, test team I have here. So let's go to this bot spam channel and let's let me set up the scenario a little bit. So let's say there's like an ask me anything sort of session where like a leader is setting up something. So, um, so I posted this and now because we have message actions, you can actually go on the message or the message menu here on dot 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 and you would see an option called take action. So we have more actions and then you have a bunch of actions available. So this is using the same pipeline as compose extensions. There's just a little bit more code you need to write and then you can have a message action as well. So there is this reply anonymously message action that I built and will be putting that on GitHub. So I'm gonna use that to demo here. So I click on that. So this is using something called a task module that I'm gonna show later. But I type my reply here and click submit. So I'm using the bot APIs behind the covers to actually post this message back under the reply chain. So this is sort of a scenario where message actions make sense. Again, if you want to leverage message actions as a developer, you're still building a messaging extension and there's just a little bit more code you need to write. So message extensions are really powerful to talk about things in other systems and we're adding a couple of new features here as well that are gonna be super interesting. So for messaging extensions, the things you need to keep in mind are they're really meant for sharing content that makes sense in conversations. So it doesn't have to be each and everything that your application has. So like in the case of a bug management system, it is bugs and pull requests and builds and stuff like that. You can take advantage of the rich card types. So you can use adaptive cards, hero cards, thumbnail cards. You want to keep your search results snappy and responsive and you can actually combine code for the messaging extension and bot as well. So you can use the same set of SDKs, the same set of code behind the scenes for everything. You can also use adaptive cards, uh, like I mentioned a little bit in the beginning. So uh, let me show an example for adaptive cards. The best example I have here, which is easy to follow along, is actually use App Studio. Um, go to Card Editor, and this allows you to construct your own adaptive cards or use some of the other card types we have available as well. So I'm going to tap on create a new card and let me do adaptive. And so adaptive cards are really JSON that kind of describes the layout of the card. So this is a default sample adaptive card we have here. I'm just gonna click on send me this card and the App Studio bot should send me this card in my conversation with it. So now if I go back to the conversations, I should see this adaptive card come through. So there's a bunch of sections here. There are input controls as well. So let me try them out as well. So set due date uses a date time picker and comment uses a text box. So you can totally leverage adaptive cards in your applications as well to allow rich data input from users as well as send more structured data back to users as well. So next up we have task modules and task modules are a great way to actually um, surf surface some sort of a workflow to the users with more detailed information, show media like images or video, or even collect form input from users. You can use the Teams JavaScript SDK that we have or even send an adaptive card back to Teams and have it render. So let me demo this as well. And the best example I have for this is something called Praise that we released recently. So let me go to the test team that I had. So I go to the bot spam channel and I click on new conversation. And I see this praise icon. So praise is something available to all users of Teams around the world, but this uses task module behind the covers. So when I clicked on the praise icon here, it is using something called a create messaging extension and then using task module along with it to return as some a web page that we are actually using web views to render using the task module API that we have. So in this case, praise, the model here is that you can choose sort of a sticker for somebody and uh, give the praise out. So I'm gonna choose leadership and th give this out to somebody. Um, and so this is all using task module here. Click preview. Uh, so you can do multi-step task modules as well. Looks good, I click send and then praise goes ahead and posts uh, this card in the channel. 
So this was the demo for Praise and for Task Module as well. Thanks, that's all I have. I had fun presenting and talking about building bots, messaging extensions, task modules, adaptive cards, etc. I hope you're excited as well to dive in and figure out how to leverage all these things in your apps. Thanks, bye.